Hello and welcome to the latest in our podcast series. Uh, Today we are going to be talking to members of the Unbound Sketchbook. This will be in two parts. First, we are going to be talking to the writers. So, my name is Katie Herbert and I am joined by Dario Knight, Gareth Johnson and Brian Murray. Uh, If you would please introduce yourselves and then just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, please. Starting with Gareth. So, I'm Gareth. Um... I've pretty much done done all of the the roles to do with Sketchbook at, at one time or another. I've uh, acted in it, written for it, directed for it, and was one of the sort of founding members of Sketchbook as well. And Brian? Yeah, my name's uh, Brian Murray. Um, I have written some sketches for The Unbound. I've directed one show, um, and I've acted in mainly Sketchbook shows and do a bit of improvisation with the, with the team. And Dario? Hello, I'm Dario Knight. I'm uh, also one of the writers and uh, one-time director for the sketchbook and uh, the producer as well. Okay, welcome to you all. So, first question, how long has Unbound been doing a sketchbook and what gave you the initial idea for it? 2016, I think, is when we started. It was the first show. Yeah, fair old number of years now. Yeah, fifth anniversary this year. Ooh. Ooh. Um, my memory is that Gareth and Matt Doherty, who was uh, one of the founding members, sadly no longer with us, um, came up with the idea of doing, I don't know if it was a a sketch group, it was some sort of comedy team or comedy show. Yeah, at the time we just sort of, we knew we wanted to do something to do with comedy, you know, whether that be sort of panel shows, whether that be improv, whether that be a a sketch show, but we knew we wanted to do something and... um, Obviously, we we had a few sketches effectively already in the bag because I think Dario, you had some sketches that you'd, you know, written sort of as previous writing. I think I had some, and I think Brian, you had some as, some as well. So sort of once the idea of doing something with comedy started up, and of course there was um there was already sort of improv going on around there as well. So that naturally sort of pushed. You know, there's there's a gap for putting some sketches in as well there and then when we discovered that we've already got this you know pool of existent writing and you know we've got some very talented people who can contribute some you know some new sketches as well get some new writing in there and you know we had a a reasonable chunk of people who were interested in doing some comedic acting it just sort of became the the natural thing to do and I think it, it really was Matt's enthusiasm that, that pushed it through mm. um, because every time we sort of talked about it, he was so enthusiastic about it and just pushing and pushing and pushing for for something to happen that we kind of had to. It was just this tidal wave of enthusiasm that you had <laughs> to respond to. So, yeah, once it sort of started rolling, it just really went from there. My memory is it... There were some workshops, I think, originally, which were informal sessions in the summer of that year, 2016, that were led by Gareth and Matt, which were mainly just to get like minded people together, people who were interested in comedy and doing some sort of comedy project. It wasn't a, a sketch show from the from the off, but that's what came out of it, it was people sharing ideas and um eventually it became okay i think it's a sketch show let's do a sketch show which was uh which was fantastic and from my point it was great sort of as you say gareth having matt's enthusiasm in your own as well coming and saying we want to do something and that's the best bit as a producer you can just go okay that's brilliant here's the day here's the time here's the here's the resources away you go it was it was great to see it grow and then i came in a bit later when i think it had been formalized it would be a sketch show and i found some material which I'd written years ago, years and years ago. And then as it became a show, I sort of got more involved. Yeah, because there, w- there was a time when it was sort of, we we were still trying to figure out exactly what it was going to be. I think we'd we'd somewhat settled on it's going to be a sketch show in some way, shape or form. Um, but we were still trying to determine, like, is it going to be, is it going to be themed? Is it going to be talking about a particular idea? Um and I, I think what we sort of came up with eventually, where it is quite a, yeah, it's quite an eclectic 
collection of sketches um when when you actually sort of put it together there's lots of different styles lots of different ideas um and i think again that came from the fact that we just got a collaboration of of people together and shared those ideas and by the end there were just so many ideas floating around you couldn't you couldn't really pin it down to one particular yeah you know, one particular thing one particular theme um and i think that's been a real strength of the sketchbook is that it it is quite a varied range of styles topics um you've got surreal stuff you've got stuff that's very word based you've got stuff that's very character based um but it's not sort of railroaded into into one particular thing it really does cover whatever is good quality that ends up going in so have you had quite a few writers then that have come through and done sketches or is it you have kind of the same people come forward a lot at the beginning we had quite a few people in this sort of round yeah this sort of circle format contributing ideas in those original workshops mm. um in terms of the actual writers i think we've had maybe six or seven total writers but it is mostly the um mostly the main three that do the the lion's share of the sketches but i think in total we've had maybe six or seven uh overall yeah because matt wrote some stuff for the first show i remember and um pete benson's uh done written some stuff for us and jamie drew yeah. um brigitte i think wrote a sketch as well yes brigitte wrote a sketch yes as well for the first one yet um, to be aired but there is an andy shaw sketch potentially in the offing yes yeah, so i mean the, hopefully going forward we'll have uh, it's an open shop for anyone to submit ideas and what's lovely is that there are now people who've been working for around for a while who are now dipping their toe in the water of writing and writing sketches so hopefully there'll be a lot more but um yeah the the core of it's been the three of us i suppose but uh it's always nice when a new voice comes in and sort of how how collaborative is the writing process for sketchbook for the do you have each person has their own sketches and then you all get together to decide the sh- shape of the show or I mean, it's a bit of a cop-out answer, but it's as collaborative as it needs to be in that if one person has just a great idea for a sketch and it's it's fully formed and it's there and they, they just want to go away and write it and then come to the, the group with that sketch and say, look, here it is. And then it, it's already fully formed. It's already got everything it needs to be. So you don't really need to, to do anything with that, do anything to that. Um, but occasionally it can be quite collaborative in that you just sort of say to each other, oh, I've got this idea, this, yeah, this concept is got to be funny somehow. How can that be funny? And then you sort of throw it around and, and workshop it through. We don't tend to sit down together and write in the sense of you go there with a blank bit of paper or a blank screen and go, right, so what happens? Um, we all tend to work fairly uh, individually, but... Uh, as Gareth says, there have been sketches that have been born out of the writers' meetings we've had, where we've perhaps got some material we're going through, and then someone will say, "I've had an idea," and then you you riff on it. And there have been a few sketches that have changed hands, um, sort of started with one writer and ended with another. I, there's um, Stork Delivery Service, which is from the very first show we did. I think that was a, a Matt Doherty sketch that I then did a, a redraft on. Um, I mean, Brian, I think there was the was it the Creation Focus Group that was a one where i think you and i had both ended up writing a sketch about the creation of earth and then we ended up with a sketch that was a little bit of an amalgamation of both i think yes yeah i mean i think that was an interesting idea we i think we could maybe it'd be nice to sort of um i think more we're maybe a bit more collaborative in the early stages but i think everybody sort of found their their sort of groove a little bit um it would be interesting to sort of collaborate you know on, on more sketches I think the thing that's kind of interesting is that, um, in addition, like as you say, there's, there's sketches that we've sort of cut and shut, and sketches that we've collaborated on. If I do get stuck with a sketch and I'm sort of saying, okay, I've got struck with a punchline or whatever, what, what I do notice is the suggestions I get back from you and Gareth. They're actually very often the sorts of ideas we're actually on the same wavelength. The sort of ideas that we, you know, I'm already thinking of, and I'm that, that's mm. quite interesting. Yeah, and I, I think those those initial writers' meetings are really helpful for bringing ideas, bringing ideas through, and sort of getting your your base points for sketches, which often is one of the one of the hardest things is obviously coming up with the original idea. Um, but always after those writers' meetings, you come out just swimming with ideas, and obviously some of them end up going nowhere, but some of them end up being some of our 
best sketches. Do you do you have a favourite sketch or a favourite sketchbook show? And um, for Gareth and Brian, do you have a favourite sketch that you've been in as well as an actor? That's an easy one for me. I think <laughs> probably I'm guessing that a lot of people will say this. Um, uh, Museum of Greek Literature. Oh, I'd oh, love yeah. that sketch. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm I'm lucky to be in it. Uh, mm. with Emily and I think it's quite nice that actually Emily and I have, I guess we must have done something right with our characters because although we've talked about moving sketches around we're, we're always in that sketch we could mm. both I mean you could it's one of the few sketches we could just do at a drop of a hat for me it's mm. a perfect sketch because it, it's one of it's one of Gareth's I, I, I should explain um, you know which is one of mine but it's not <laughs> breaks my heart um, but it's a perfect sketch because a sketch should be really ideally just one simple idea. You've got somewhere between three to five minutes to say what you're going to say. And the Museum of Greek Literature is just one beautifully simple idea where every single comedic angle has been sort of wrung out. I don't want to spoil mm. it for anybody, but that sort of every sort of comedic angle has been explored on what is essentially just, just you know, a, a, an idea, you know. Um, but it it really works, and it's a real kind of good standby sketch for the uh, for the group. Yeah, I mean, so so many favourite sketches um, from from my point of view. One has to be Bear Slayer, um, just purely because it it's just a, a surreal, out there, wacky idea that if you were to sort of say it, you know, as as a concept, it wouldn't make any sense. Um, but it, it's almost the fact that it's so surreal that makes mm. it work. And you and you get to run around as well. Yeah, then you get to run around and you get to yeah. be re- a really sort of loud in your face character. So it's great to <laughs> yeah. act as well. Overactors Anonymous is another good one. You talked about the difference between word based and character based, and Overactors Anonymous is very character based, and it, it, it's it's uh, it's a little bit. I'm guessing, Darius, it's a little bit of. Uh, how do I, uh, let me word this delicately. It's a little <laughs> bit sort of tongue in cheek aimed at the group, isn't it? Really, there's, there's a degree of self referential uh, I couldn't possibly comment, <laughs> no. Brian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know what you mean. Plead the Fifth Amendment. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a, a little. I mean, it's certainly poking fun at, uh, at uh, amateur dramatics in a in a way. Um, we don't have anyone like that in the group, really. There's there's no one who's that over the top. But it's um, it's a, it was a good. You kind of I knew when we when I wrote that one that everyone would have fun with it. It's a good excuse just to go big and silly, and everyone knows those characters. We've all met them, so I think that's one. Yeah, we we knew everyone was gonna have a ball doing that one, and it went down really well. And it is so fun to do, like. You know, whether you're playing, you know, one of the sort of facilitator assistant characters who are just in the midst of this madness trying to cope, or you are sort of doing the ridiculously over the top actors, it's all sort of brilliant fun to do. And it's also one of the ones that, yeah, involves a lot of really interesting physicality as well. You've got sort of the the moment of the standing up and the chairs go over and you've got the the spitting of the water it's it, so much is happening in that sketch that's just great fun to to do obviously a nightmare to uh, direct but that's beside the point <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, it, it's hard to pick sketch i mean we must have done over a hundred of them now yeah. um i think the one that i've laughed the most at is one of brian's called moody detective <laughs> which was from the I think the fourth show we did or possibly the fifth and um it's it's a fantastic script it's uh it's a sort of riff on that that archetypal jaded rather cynical detective you've seen on telly plenty of times um but it's really it's a really funny observation of that and a, not quite a parody it's just riffing on the idea and i remember reading it and laughing and then when we cast joe yeah. As the moody detective, <laughs> I laughed even harder, and it is one of the sketches I still, I, it still makes me laugh. Some of them you you do so many times, especially when we've reprised them on tour and stuff, that you you don't tend to find them as funny because you've just seen it too many times. That one I laughed from the moment I read it to when we did it in the performance. It was that was a fantastic sketch, and again went down brilliantly with the audience. So back in two thousand and nineteen, you decided to take the sketchbook on tour. So, Back when we were allowed, yeah. Yeah, when we were allowed to move around. Um, so how did that come about? How were you reaching new audiences, Dario? 
Well, I think there'd always been a, a keenness. Certainly, I remember Brian uh, saying this and, and Gareth too, to find other ways and other venues to to put the material in front of uh, and put the material into, because we we write them for the limelight, we rehearse them for two months, and then you perform it once, and then that's kind of it. You move on to the next show. And so there was a, a feeling of it would be nice to find another life for the material. And the year before that, we'd done a show in Wickham, uh, the Wickham Arts Centre, which Matt Doherty had organised. He'd moved to Wickham and gotten to know the, the people in charge of the Arts Centre there and basically got us a gig, which was uh, which was great. And so we went along. We did, a, I think it was a compilation of the first three shows we'd done at the Limelight by that point and took the team down there, had a great night. And that was a precursor, really, to to doing the tour and the idea as i say had been around for a while uh, there was a lot of uh, willingness to do it it's one of those projects as so many of them in unbound that just take such a long time to organize and go through the booking process and the, the publicity and the planning so it took a while to get around to it, but we got to 2019 and that was unbound's fifth birthday and we thought well that's a nice little birthday project is to finally take the sketchbook out to other venues and so i set to work uh, some venues that I knew I knew people there and contacted them and asked them others that it was a bit more of an introduction and pitching it to them and we had I think five dates in in the main run which was in September and we went to there was the second space at the Waterside Theatre in Aylesbury there was the cellar club at the Old Town Hall in Hemel Hempstead we went back to Wickham Art Centre uh, the Court Theatre in Tring and the Players Theatre in Tame and that was the the main run and then Slightly separately from that, I think near springtime 2019, uh, Pete Benson got in touch. He'd been contacted by someone who was organising or was part of the Exeter Fringe Festival. It was the first time they were doing one down there. And they were looking for acts and Pete recommended us. And so we ended up getting a booking down there, which was very exciting in August. Um, and later we then found out there was going to be a, a Watford Fringe Festival, a bit closer to home. And we applied for that and got there. And so we ended up with uh, seven shows in total. Although the Fringe ones were slightly different because... Um, on the fringe circuit you can only do an hour you've got to keep it very tightly to an hour we knew we were travelling much further afield to go to Exeter so we, the plan was to have a separate cast actually, a much smaller group of actors doing that and then a, the full group doing the main body of the tour didn't quite work out that way as or best laid plans and all that um, so that's really how it came about and it was it was great fun and uh, audiences responded really really well It's it's always quite daunting because when you're playing to the home crowd you know that they're they're going to be there to enjoy themselves they're there to cheer you on so you you can you can never guarantee that a sketch is going to go down well some you know don't quite get the response you want but you know that they're on side and they're all it's a lot of goodwill in the room when you go somewhere else there's they don't know you from adam so you've got to work it up but actually every venue we performed in we got a great reaction we had a there was a great review from exeter when we performed there and uh so yeah it was it was great fun and we learned a lot about doing it and uh hopefully once we're uh once we passed COVID, we are going to be going back. We planned the next tour, which was called Mind the Gap, but that's a, a victim of Coronas Interruptus, unfortunately. But uh, that will be will be back, hopefully, by the end of this year or early next. How how did you decide which of the sketches, which of the many sketches <laughs> that you've had that you were going to perform on the tour? We had a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever won got their material used. Excellent. Um, that works. <laughs> I. I don't remember. I honestly don't. I think some of them were written for the limelight with the the resources and the the setup that's there. So they don't they don't tour particularly easily. Um, so that they would cut some things that were very technical and very visual. If it's something that requires a lot of if there's something that requires a lot of lighting or sound, then we would perhaps not put that in because when you're touring to other venues you've got to be able to get in there quickly you haven't got time to rig lights very specifically for every different sketch um so that i mean i remember that was that was part of the process we were able to sort of take out ones we thought that's just going to be too difficult to tour or or what have you but i suppose it was it was our favorites in a way wasn't it yeah i mean i think the the technical challenges was also a a big factor as you say like you want to you want to have enough sort of props and interesting you know, sounds or, or visual things to keep it interesting. But you do always need to bear in mind that anything you sign up for being in a sketch is something that you will need to lug around, you know, multiple venues with you, um, as well as all of, obviously, the banners and the, 
you know, the technical stuff as well. So there, there was definitely a a technical element to it as well. But I think, yeah, it was just sort of going through, you know, the sketches, how they did in the, the sketch shows that they appeared in and sort of selecting our our sort of favourite ones. But what's, you know, been really good is that when we come to make the Mind the Gap tour, there's still loads of great material and there's still so much to choose from. Gareth and Brian, you were both performing in these. So what were your highlights of performing on tour? I mean, obviously, you've got to say performing at the uh, at the Waterside Second Space was a, a big old big old highlight there. And again, sort of knowing that even in in that kind of venue that you go down really well, that you still get a really good reception was um was great. Um, but all, all of them were just, you know, brilliant to do. And as, as Dario said, it's, it's great to know that you can go out to somewhere where you don't have the home field advantage. And still it goes really well. And that's sort of that's when, you know, it's not just your friends and family saying, oh, aren't you really good? No, this is actually really good material and it does work in in multiple situations. So just finding that out was a real highlight. What about you, Brian? I mean, I think, yeah, and it comes back to the uh, your, your, your question about the difference sort of choosing the sketches for the physical setup, because the, the difference in the stages was huge. I mean, Hemel was a tiny, tiny performance area. So that kind of brought its own challenges. Um, and yet, uh, probably the second stage and actually um, Court Theatre in Trig, which I think now has a longer title. Um, that's a, that was a big stage. And that would just require a completely different sort of set up. And we had to change entrances and exit. Um, but it was nice to get the variety. Um, I, I quite fondly remember the last night, which was um, the uh, Tame. Um, I seem to remember that. And, you know, I got some friends who hadn't seen any of my sort of comedy before um, sort of come along and sort of, you know, and, and, and they really liked it. And it was, it was a nice show to go out on. I remember that one. We mentioned earlier on Matt Doherty as one of the founding members of the sketchbook. What's your favourite memory of working with Matt? Oh, um... It's a tough one. You, you could do a whole podcast, I'm sure, of <laughs> anecdotes about Matt. Um, heavily censored, I should think, for language. Um, he was, uh, he was, he was fantastic. As, as Gary said, his enthusiasm uh, on many Unbound projects is, is what really powered uh, the sketchbook. And uh, although he's, let's say, sadly no longer with us, that's still a very uh, driving factor. I think that enthusiasm still there. I. I, my favourite memories of spending time with him was the read-throughs. It's always fun when everyone's just sat down reading it for the first time and uh, particularly actors haven't seen the scripts before. So you get a very genuine reaction. And Matt's reactions were always so so open and honest and joyful. He Seeing him laughing at a, a bit of material and hearing him laugh was, was fantastic. And I, I have very happy memories of getting the the group around a table and sitting there reading out and, and him being helpless <laughs> with laughter. He, he, he laughed, laughed loud and often. It's always good to get some feedback like that, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And what was amazing about Matt was the sheer charisma of the man. Um, like I remember when we were talking to the, the Wickham Art Center and obviously Matt had sort of laid the groundwork with that and sort of, you know, got us the, the introduction and just when, when we were in that initial meeting, I think it was me, uh, you, Dario and, and Matt. And e even though sort of the technical contributions from Matt, you know, weren't that great. Just having him, <laughs> having him there and having him sort of just being this beacon of charisma. I don't think we'd have got nearly as positive a reception if we hadn't just had him, you know, front and center getting us the positivity. What about you, Brian? Um, well, I've not known Matt quite as long as uh, Dario and, and Gareth. Um, Matt, that was always a bit of an enigma because, to me, because he just these wild, this wild hair. Um, he had a Justin Bieber fixation. Um, <laughs> and... He did have a tattoo. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just remember sort of, you know, you know, you just come in with a different haircut. I mean, once it was kind of like, you know, LGBT colours, if I remember correctly. I don't know if I'm making that up or a Justin Bieber tattoo. And I was like, Matt, what, what, 
you, you've got to explain this to me. You know? <laughs> um, but he was a lovely guy, and, and like you say, he wasn't a detailed person, but I think the, the kind of the performance, the, the, the meeting at the Wickham Centre was a little bit like him in sketches, really. He, he wasn't great with lines, but there were certain characters and styles. <laughs> that, that that's he was, an understatement. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, he was funny, but you know what? He could take it, though. If you sort of said, listen, Mac, ah, you know, you you got to get this right. He, he never kind of, he, he, he took it very well, and he was just such a lovely, gentle soul, really. Oh, um, I remember he, he had a I'm lovely... the first to admit that he wasn't uh, one of life's great line learners or uh, yeah, yeah. preparers. But he's probably one of the only people who can get away with not needing to be. Because, like, like yeah. I say, he's just... His stage presence is so positive that even if he just goes on and goes i don't know what i'm doing and throws his hands up in the air the audience will be on side and there's not many yeah. people who can get away with that but matt definitely <laughs> could he did he yeah. just had style and uh, so now obviously post covid i imagine but where do you hope to take the unbound sketchbook in the future <laughs> excellent, excellent. The final I think that's comedy frontier. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess this is part of it. I mean, really, you know, again, Jarrow, Gareth, probably are the, the powerhouses there. But, you know, it's not just there is obviously the response to COVID itself. There's always been an online content for Unbound, but that's really taken off as a result of COVID. Um, and I, I personally think that's something we should keep up. Nowadays, you know, any sketch troupe that's worth its salt is, is putting videos out there online and and it, it's a, it's a completely different undertaking but i think actually maybe we've learned something from covid about the way we could put more stuff out there online in future and hopefully more sort of audio visual stuff maybe but that's just my vote yeah i think definitely ad getting the the audio visual um you know up there and driving that because obviously we have the um we have the sketch, the audio sketch shows um, up on SoundCloud, YouTube, and all good providers of your podcast needs. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent plug there, Gareth. Excellent, Excellent well plug. Excellent. The um, money's in the post. But yeah, sort of, you know, doing doing more video recorded sketches. Would love to do that. Obviously, um, once we're all able to physically meet once again, getting the getting the touring back, yeah, you know, back up and running, and obviously working on the sixth, you know art center sketch show as well so there's there, there's plenty of more stuff to come from sketchbook both before and after covid or rather during and after covid i should say Hello and welcome back to the, the second part of the podcast it's all change i'm going to be doing the questions for this bit and uh, we're going to be talking more about the acting in the sketchbook shows so uh, gareth and brian are still here and uh, they are joined by... Hello, uh, my name is still Katie Herbert from earlier. Um, I'm now answering questions. Uh, I have been with the sketchbook since 2019. I'm Jo Pratt, and I can't remember how long I've been with the sketchbook. <laughs> I like the fact we both sound unsure of what our names are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been Not a long really, yeah. months, hasn't it, folks? <laughs> Not sure um, if you want to put your name to the project. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, first question, I mean, um, Gareth and Brian, we probably already covered this, but uh, Joe and Katie, what's your first memory of the sketchbook, either working on one of the sketchbook shows or, or seeing one of them performed? Katie, what's your first memory of it? Um, my first memory of it is uh, there was a show that you put on in memory of Matt Doherty. So it wasn't actually a sketchbook show in and of itself but i know that you had a lot of the sketches that you use in the sketchbook in that show and i remember very much there was a series of ones about a doctor i think involving chris barnett <laughs> i remember those ones the doctor doctor ones so that was my first kind of uh, introduction to sketchbook and then um after that seeing a lot more of the actual sketchbook shows really but that was on mine and joe i can't actually remember my first introduction to sketchbook because it's all sort of mixed up in my head with um the the tuesday evening acting classes that we we sort of yes. all went to and somehow that turned into at some point performing properly and i think initially i might have might have been improv 
first, which is quite terrifying. Um, so I can't <laughs> actually remember my first introduction into the sketchbook, but it just feels like it's always been there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then this one's uh, all, all of you can ask this one. Answer this one rather. Um, so, what's the best? What's the most enjoyable part of the process of putting on a, a sketchbook show? Um, Gareth, you first. Ooh, um, I got to say, one of the best ones is the first, the first rehearsal of a sketch where we're sort of properly, properly performing it. Like you've had the, you've had the read through, and you've had the first rehearsal where. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're still sort of just reading it through, finding your feet, finding the, finding the sketch. But when you get that first rehearsal where everyone sort of got their characters now, and everyone knows that the lines that have got the great jokes on it, and suddenly it just comes alive. That is, that's a great moment for me. And Brian, uh, you know, I'd agree with that. Actually, I mean, it's it, it, it's great. Like I was saying earlier, it's, it's a very sort of open cast, and people are, you know, they're very supportive and want to be entertained. Um, I suppose the other uh, bit that's nice is actually at the end of a show, um, you know, we have a lovely audience who come to the Queen's Park Centre and they are, again, it's uh, you know, maybe a certain amount of family and friends, but there's a lot of people there who are there to enjoy the show and afterwards we get some really nice comments. So it's quite nice to sort of find an excuse to sneak off to the bar afterwards and, and, and you know, hopefully somebody says something nice. There, you don't need an excuse. <laughs> what, to go to the bar? <laughs> <laughs> again uh, Joe what about you uh, well I mean I kind of love all of it really so that doesn't really answer the question I, lo I love the performances and like the camaraderie in the in the backstage area and the buzz um, but I also really enjoy the rehearsals I enjoy watching the other performers who you know are just really good at what they do and it's funny the stuff is funny and we just have a lot of fun I don't enjoy the nerves um, <laughs> of a performance but everything else I just enjoy all of it really Excellent. And Katie? It, it's all very, very funny. I think the whole point is that it's got to be funny. So when you're, even if it's the first read through or whether you're actually standing up on the stage doing it for the first time, there's a lot of trial and error as well, which I quite enjoy. People trying things and doing something and people sort of very politely saying, no, I, I don't think you should do it like that at all. I think you should, I think, <laughs> never do it like that again. Do it the first way around. <laughs> Um, but I like that. I like that people sort of try different things or go, oh, would it be funnier if I moved this over here or did it like this? And I think it's it's quite a fun process to be part of, really. And I know this is the the acting side of it. But again, like another favourite bit has to be the first read through. Mm. The moment when a sketch transforms from what it's like in your head. You Generally, you've got an idea of how you expect someone might play it. Um, but when you first put those words in front of an actor and they, they just, you know, do brilliant things with it, that again is just a magical moment. OK, so uh, moving forward with performances then, um, what are the most memorable moments you've had performing on stage in a sketchbook show? And is there a bit of an addendum to that? Is there anything that's ever gone wrong or has anyone ever corpsed on stage? Um, Katie, do you want to go first on that one? My well, the the most memorable moments <clears throat> on stage in general, I would say, are when you've been rehearsing something, and you don't necessarily get that feedback, and then you do it on stage, and suddenly people laugh at a particular line that you didn't think was the funny line or something like that, and you get that feedback from them. So that's kind of a general thing. But my favourite moment is when we went to Watford. We took it on tour, and we went to Watford. And walking out at the end to do a bow, and I just very much remember there was a little old lady in the audience who just looked up at me and gave me a little thumbs up just at the oh. end, just to say, <laughs> as if to say, well done, well done, dear. That's very good. <laughs> and that I still remember her. That was lovely. Uh -oh. <laughs> you said, thanks, Gran. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you later. Can I have a lift home? No. <laughs> uh, Joe, what about you? Um... I can remember a few sketches with corpses on stage rather than <laughs> people corpsing. <laughs> and, um, those are quite often quite funny. I can't remember any major disasters, but I do f remember finding it very amusing when Alistair's um, moustache would never stay on when he was being hit. Oh, I've heard about that. Um, yeah, that was that was never stopped to be uh, never stopped amusing me in rehearsals and performances. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, I agree with Katie that it's when you get the big laughs that it, it's such a good feeling, mm. that feedback. And yeah, it, does, it doesn't always come where you expect, but sometimes it does come where you expect and you know it's going to come and then it comes and it's just, it's great. Yeah, speaking of, has anything ever gone wrong on a sketch? Um, in the very, very first sketch show, luckily it didn't actually happen. <laughs> oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> but we, we, we had a, a sketch called the Knock Knock Sketch, which required a door. And the only door we had was a massive, massive one from, from Panto, I think it was, an old, old Panto um, bit of scenery. And it was huge. And I think we'd sort of slightly propped it up with a, a wooden support. And during the sketch, I think it was Chris Barnett who was playing the character who was inside the house. And he had to shut the door at one point and he slammed it slightly too hard. And I think it knocked the supports. So the door was fine, but you could just see it start to wobble <laughs> very, very <laughs> slightly. And I was over on the other side of the stage at the time, just looking at this door starting to wobble, starting to go. And I sort of, I must have watched it for about 20 seconds or so before deciding, no, I've got to go and do something about this. <laughs> and you just saw me dive across the back of the stage from out of sight, just very briefly across the stage in sight and then out of sight again as I desperately go and try and prop this door back up. Uh, Brian, what about you? Well, I, I, to be honest, I'm gonna, um, I can't think of another example. The uh, Alistair Sanderson of Hitler was a bit of a, a special one. The, the sketch was doing quite well already. Um, and when Alistair's moustache came off, we actually had planned for this. We actually had a spare moustache, and I was kind of meant to be Admiral Dernis because he was, he was the second in command. So Alice had to stand there on stage with his hand out as Hitler so Admiral Dernis could give him his spare moustache. Um, and the audience loved it so much. We actually did. I remember we had a very serious argument as to whether we were actually going to start putting this into the sketch. Or, you know, I think probably correctly we decided, look, it's just one of those things. We just leave it like that. But, but, you know, the audience kind of really loved that sort of the, the fact that uh, we were in that sort of tension, that moment that things weren't going right. And, uh, you know, I think I think they kind of rather enjoyed our discomfort. But, it, you know, hey, it's all laughs, isn't it? That is very true. I remember I was teching on, I think it was one of the tour performances. And Alistair said it had happened the first time very genuinely. And it, it had happened in a in the perfect moment the, the moustache's timing uh, like alistair's was beautiful <laughs> um, and then subsequently it was there was a long protracted discussion about whether it should whether we should try and make it happen but you can't really make it the fact is it was an accident and it, it, it was naturally very funny but i do remember alistair at one point trying to get it to dislodge at exactly the right moment by contorting his face mm. as every time he spoke he was trying to sort of dislodge it and it and, the, and then it wouldn't <laughs> and um I think at the end, by the time we took it to the waterside, I seem to remember Angela pinning him down and painting it on him. <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as a last resort, kind of, don't worry, it's fine, we'll paint it on. Um, so moving on to sketches in general, is there a favourite sketch or one in particular that you really look forward to performing or looked forward to performing when we did it? Is there one that you thought, I can't wait to perform that on stage? and Or even one that you couldn't wait to see others perform? Um, well, I don't know if it's a favourite, but I did very much enjoy watching um, the boys rehearse. I think it was about space invaders. <laughs> <laughs> just to yeah, just to set the scene, they kind of they you have to do the moves as, like the space invaders yeah. do at the same time of doing the lines. And I don't know how many times you guys had to do that, but just combining that move with line seemed to be the most difficult thing <laughs> in the entire world. <laughs> So I very much enjoyed watching that. That was very funny. <laughs> that was quite a good one to watch. That was a horrible sketch to rehearse, but it got a really, this is one of Dario's, I should say, but it got a really good response yeah. on the night. You know, that was really gratifying that all those hours shouting at each other going, no, the mother shit comes across like this! <laughs> so, <laughs> it was all worth it in the end. It was the one point I think the group have nearly fallen out was that sketch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying yeah. to get there. Because, I mean, it is incredibly and i say it's guiltily as the writer it is so difficult to 
to do to get the movement left to right, right to left, forward a step, left a step, and do lines. I admit it is it is cruel as a writer. Um, so I apologise anyone who's ever been in that one. But uh, it went as you said, it went down well. Um, and I can't remember whether we ever seriously considered this or not. But I think there was at one point a suggestion that not only do we want the the movements and the lines, you know, the legs and the arms and coordinating, staying in a line and coordinating when you go forward. But I think at one point there was a suggestion that we also want the Space Invaders sound effect and music. So you also would have to coordinate with this sound effect that was going to be going on in the background Oh, every time as someone well. got shot. Yeah. You, have to, you yeah. have to get shot at exactly the same moment as the sound. Yeah. yeah. That would have been a nightmare. Yeah. I, I mean, actually, I think in the end we just got, I just found some generic um, Space Invader music. And that, that kind of worked actually just as well. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joe, what about you? Is there a, a favourite sketch to to be in or to to watch? Well, loads of them. <laughs> I know that's cop out, but I, I I really enjoy doing the moody detective and the surgeon with Brian and also Emily, who was a corpse in that. Um, that was that was one where I remember we we laughed so much rehearsing it. It was it was really really funny to do because this is a funny sketch. It's the the writing is is funny. Um, but I mean, enjoying watching. I, I, there's so many that I enjoy watching. I, I, I like. We've talked about the Hitler bunker one. I always enjoyed that one. And there's another one um, with uh, pirates in the office. I'm not sure what it's called actually, and that's probably just giving away the punchline. <laughs> but <laughs> where, where there's an office meeting and the, and gradually uh, the the participants turn into pirates and it, it I, I don't know it's just it's very funny that one as well i enjoy watching that one okay so uh all the shows have been performed at the limelight but everyone has been on tour and we talked a little bit earlier uh gareth and brian about what it was like performing in other venues so uh mainly for joe and katie what was how did you find going on tour and performing in other venues did you have a favorite one to perform in and um particularly for joe i suppose having done the shows previously what was it like going back to sketches you'd done before and then reviving them? Well, I, I mean, I enjoyed, I really enjoyed going on the tour. I found it very exciting being at the waterside. I was quite starstruck by that. Um, and being in the dressing room at the back was just really exciting, I thought. And I, I enjoy doing um, sketches that, you know, that you're familiar with, that you, you're sort of revisiting because you feel very comfortable and relaxed in them. And you, you kind of you just sort of in the rhythm of it and there's uh, there's no sort of fear that can I remember the lines and that kind of thing um, but it's also nice to do new stuff as well so I kind of enjoy both sides um, and finding you know where the laughs are that you don't realize until as, as Katie was saying you don't realize until you do it in front of an audience and it sort of comes alive that is always exciting so yeah I did en- I did enjoy the tour I found it a little sometimes it was quite intense you know trying to sort of fit that around life because we had quite a lot of shows and rehearsals and everything else going on as well so it was quite full on but I wouldn't have not done it for anything. And Katie? Mine <clears throat> mine was slightly different really because my first experience of Sketchbook was the tour so the very first time that I ever did anything to do with Sketchbook was when we were down in Exeter so, it, it, you know, it's got quite a nice place in my heart anyway, because that's the, the first time that I got to be a part of it. Um, and, you know, having that buzz from the room of people that you didn't know. And, yeah, I think it was it was interesting to see how we all coped with going into an area and having different entrances or exits or a different stage size and sort of very, very quickly going, right, I have to walk on three beats earlier than I thought I was going to have to walk on because otherwise I'll have finished the sketch by the time I walk over there. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it was it was a good lesson in how to be flexible after you've rehearsed <laughs> these things. Um, and, yeah, Exeter would probably be my favourite just because it was my first one, really. Excellent. Um, so we were talking a bit uh, earlier about Matt Doherty. He's one of the founding members of the sketchbook and uh, myself and Gareth and Brian have been uh, sharing our memories of him. So Katie and Joe, what is what's your sort of favourite memory of working with Matt, either in the sketchbook or anything to do with Unbound? Um, I I I don't I don't have a sort of specific memory. I just he was always just really really funny, 
and really lovely. Uh, just very kind of caring, always happy to see you, kind and s sweet kind of person to be around and just had good chats and laughs. Um, I, I do, um, I, re I really enjoyed doing Inspector Murder with him, uh, which was a series of, uh, it's not sketchbook, but it was similar cast and writers. <laughs> um, and um, I just remember certain scenes from that, like the bacon sandwich scene and when he was stuck in a uh, vault with the character Laura, played by Emily, um, and he had personalised nipples. And some of those <laughs> lines are just very, very funny. And I can just hear him the way that he delivered mm. them and they just stay with me because he was just very funny at it. Um, yeah, he's he's very greatly missed and always will be. And Casey? I I didn't know Matt that well. I kind of came in um, not long before he left, really. But I remember the first time I met him, uh, I was in your production of Twelfth Night <laughs> and um, we'd been rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing and there was a particular scene, my character was supposed to get married and everyone told me Matt was going to be the person that was going to marry us and I was like, okay, that's fine. So we got to the dress rehearsal, Matt still hadn't turned up. We then got to the tech rehearsal, still no idea where Matt was. And I remember talking to you, Dario, and saying, is Matt, is Matt definitely going to... Is he definitely going to be here for this? Because he's got to marry us. And you went, yeah, 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 that's fine. He won't, he probably won't know the lines. So you gave him a Bible and you'd written out the lines and you typed it out and you'd hidden them in this Bible so that he could come on stage and he could read these lines and it would be perfect. So I remember meeting him, walking in and him being lovely. He was, it was really, you warmed to him really quickly. He was just such a lovely guy. And I walked out onto the stage and he came on to marry us and he looked at his Bible and then he shut it. And then, <laughs> there were no lines. He just made up something about marrying us and being very holy and you are now married. And then he smiled and he left. And I just thought, I, that's lovely. I just, that's wonderful. He's a lovely man. And uh, yeah, that's my memory of him, really. It's just that. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, we'll close with... Um... One more question that's uh, about performing in the sketches, and this is for all of you. If What sketchbook character that you've played would you most like to see return for another sketch? Would you most like to play again? Uh, so Gareth, would you like to go first? I don't know which ones I'd like to, to play again, but I know which ones I want to see more of. So I'd, I'd like to play Agent Indigo, but only so that there's more interaction between him and Professor Chaos. Um, so it's it's really Professor Chaos that I'd like to see again, but maybe start building up the, you know, the rivalry between the professor and the agent a bit more, so we can yeah really see how that's gonna how that's gonna evolve. So I'd like to see that um, happening. Um, I'd love to see more from the Moody Detective. I I think that's such a <laughs> such a great combination of writing and performance that there's got to be be some more of that. I'd I'd love to see. Um, and yeah, just the thing is, it I I enjoy it all so much that I wouldn't want to single out you know a particular character that I've played that I would like to yeah you know, really play again and see more of because yeah anytime something new comes along it's so brilliant that whether it be new whether it be repeat I just want to do all of it. Okay, Joe, is there a one you'd like to like to revisit as a character? I would, yeah, I would like to do more Moody Detective. <laughs> Just really enjoyed doing that. It's fun. Uh, do you have a character, Brian, you'd like to play again? Uh, well, I, I, I love my the, I love my character in Museum of Greek Literature. I'm not sure if that lends itself to, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not sure if that lends itself to uh, sequels. I think, like Gareth says, there's a lot of life left in Professor Chaos. Um and actually, Dario, overact as anonymous, you know, you could take that and put that into different situations, you know, these sort of, you know, morbidly overacting animators and just put them into different situations. I, I think there's there's room for a sequel there. And, you know, that, that was a sketch that went down well and I'm sure could do well again. Uh, and Katie, is there a character you'd like to revisit or play again? Um, well, I think, uh, yeah, in 
dangerous sounding, very similar. I do really like the moody detective. I do love the moody detective. I know we've all said that, but I think that's a definite. Um, and playing again, I don't know if it would necessarily even have to be in a different sketch, but there are certain characters that I just really enjoy doing. There's um, a sketch called Mind the Gap, where which is very, very fun to play with a slightly... I just like the fact that my character in that is kind of ignoring the ridiculousness of everything else that's going on and just carrying <laughs> on regardless. I like that. And also there's one... I really can't remember the name of it, sorry, but there's one about Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. I can't remember what that's called. Oh, uh, Sodor Safety Review. Yes, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy doing that character. <laughs> She's very, the combination of trying to be sensible, but also faced with someone who is just pressing all her buttons all the time. <laughs> she just wants to yell at and she can't, and then losing it. So I really enjoy doing that. So yeah, those would probably be my, my ones that I'd want to revisit. Excellent. Well, who knows? Maybe when lockdown's over, we shall be back with those characters and some new sketches as well. Um, thank you all for joining us. That's everything for this uh, episode of the podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and uh, we shall see you again soon. Bye.